Now at 5 a.m. on WKYT this morning, after a federal judge has ordered the Rowan County clerk to issue marriage licenses, the question remains if couples will be able to receive those licenses later today. A sinkhole in downtown Frankfort could impact your route to school early this morning. And a war veteran who passed away without any family will be laid to rest today. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning. It's great to have you with us on WKYT Thursday, August 13th. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Rebecca Smith. A lot of folks are putting an eye to the sky right now yeah. to see the, the lovely show that's going on with the <laughs> meteors. Check out the Perseid meteor showers. I was going to let yeah, you handle you the name. Thank you, Bill. Well <laughs> yeah, done. Here we go. All right, let's check in with Micah. He was uh, taking a glance or two up there this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, I tried to do it uh, for about two or three minutes outside. I didn't see anything, but you still have time. Remember, the sun doesn't rise until we get in that 6 to uh, 7 a.m. time frame. So uh, you still have about an hour, hour and a half before you can actually get that sun to rise and not see any meteors flying across the sky. There you go. Temperatures in the 50s, and it is a really nice feel outside. That's well below average. It's about 10 degrees below average in some locations. It's a great feel. 82 by the afternoon, still very pleasant. And we'll hold on to those sunny skies with just a few clouds here and there. The focus of the forecast, obviously, is the nice weather, and it holds tight, but for how long? I'll show you that in your weekend forecast coming up. Okay, we'll see you then. Thank you. Well, a federal judge has ordered Rowan County Clerk Kim Davis to issue marriage licenses to same sex couples. The case has been continued now for weeks and it could go on longer despite a federal judge's decision. WKYT's Victor Puente is at our live desk with where the case moves next. Good morning, Victor. Good morning, Bill. Rowan County Clerk Kim Davis was one of three elected officials in Kentucky who stopped issuing marriage licenses after the U.S. Supreme Court legalized same-sex marriage nationwide in June. She said issuing a marriage license to a gay couple would violate her Christian beliefs. Yesterday, a federal judge ruled that her beliefs shouldn't stop her from doing her job. The ACLU sued the county clerk on behalf of four couples, two gay and two straight, who were turned away by Davis. Yesterday, U.S. District Judge David Bunning issued an injunction requiring Davis to issue marriage licenses effective immediately. Bunning said the couples should not be forced to travel to another county and Davis should perform her assigned duties. Those couples spoke to WKYT last night and said while they were excited, they realized that this wasn't the end of the legal battle. Of course, that quickly turns to, you know, um, I don't think she's really going to issue a license to us tomorrow, but I was really excited again. Shortly after that injunction, Davis's attorney said they plan to appeal the judge's order. They argue that the U.S. Constitution protects her religious freedoms. Now, three of those couples told us they would be going to the Round County Courthouse today to get a marriage license. Davis's attorney wouldn't say if she would be issuing them. At the live desk, Victor Puente, WKYT. All right, thanks so much, Victor. Now onto a story we're tracking out of Clay County. Two men have been arrested and charged in connection with a murder. Last night, police say they arrested Roscoe Henson. He's charged with the murder of Trevor Dykes. Tuesday night, police arrested Thomas Miracle and charged him with solicitation to commit murder. Police have not said where they found Henson. 503 on WKYT this morning, and we are tracking a mystery this morning in Jessamine County. Investigators say they have found what appears to be a body part. But at this point, they're not even sure if it is human. Two hikers found it yesterday on the banks of the Kentucky River near High Bridge. They tell us they followed clues that led them to what looked like a human hand. I just followed the smell, and I just was where it was. It was just laying on the logs. I just seen something laying there, and it looked like a hand. I don't know if it was like an animal or a real hand. And he was like, no, nah, that looks like human. Coroner Michael Hughes says it was found near several small bones that appear to be from an animal. Whatever it is, he says he thinks it has been rotting there for at least a month. He says he can't be sure just yet that the remains are, in fact, human. He says he does not think this discovery is linked to the search on the river in Fayette County on Monday. We now know the name of a woman who died in a Garrett County crash. The Garrett County coroner identified the victim as 65-year-old Sharon Collins of Nicholasville. Police say she was driving an SUV that hit a tractor trailer on US-27 north of Lancaster yesterday. Investigators say Collins died at the scene. Two other people in the SUV were airlifted to the hospital. Police think the SUV ran a red light before the crash.
An intersection in downtown Frankfurt is still closed this morning because of a sinkhole. Emergency managers say it opened up yesterday at the intersection of Shelby Street and 4th Street, and that's not far from Frankfurt High School. They say the hole is two feet by two feet at the surface, but it's actually much larger underneath the pavement. Emergency managers say water and sewer lines run through the sinkhole area, and that is making repairs more difficult. Uh, we're looking into the sewer line that's underneath there, you know, until we actually get into it. I, there are no exacts in this right now. The intersection is expected to be closed through at least this afternoon, and buses headed to Frankfurt High School this morning will be dropping off students by using Steel Street, which runs behind the school. Today, a judge plans to announce if more evidence in a high profile bourbon theft case will be made available to the public. Ten people are charged and implicated in a theft of bourbon from two distilleries in Kentucky. Yesterday at a hearing, the judge heard arguments for and against making more evidence public. An attorney for the Courier Journal said it was the media's right to have that evidence, but an attorney for Gilbert Kurtzinger, accused of being the theft ringleader, says it would make for an unfair trial. A statue of Confederate President Jefferson Davis in the state capitol will be an issue in the next legislative session. According to our partners at the Herald Leader, House Speaker Greg Stumbo says he will file legislation during the 2016 General Assembly calling for the statue to be removed. Stumbo says it is, quote, inappropriate for the statue to be there. He wants it in the Kentucky History Center instead. Davis was born in Kentucky. Last week, the State Historic Properties Advisory Commission voted to keep the statue in the Capitol, but to add an educational context to it. And this comes as the city of Lexington is discussing what should happen to some statues of Confederate officers. Mayor Jim Gray has asked the Urban County Arts Review Board to look at the placement and the presentation of the John Hunt Morgan and John C. Breckenridge statues, which are outside the old courthouse. They're there alongside an, a historic marker about slavery in Cheapside Park. A public meeting about the statues will be held August 24th in council chambers. The mayor says he expects a report from the board by the end of September. A funeral will be held today for a Kentucky Navy veteran who died without any family to claim him. Don Cass lived in Mercer County. Ramsey Young Funeral Home in Lancaster says he died at the VA hospital on July 29th. The funeral home has organized the funeral for Cass to make sure he has a proper burial. Others in the community have stepped up to honor him. We're proud to go do it. Uh, it doesn't matter, you know, if there's family there or not, because it's if not, it's just to me, it's not very reverent for a guy to get buried and no one there to uh, observe it. The funeral will begin this morning at 11 at Camp Nelson Cemetery in Jessamine County. With Halloween falling on a busy day this year in Lexington, some are concerned about combining traffic with trick-or-treaters. Trick-or-treating falls on the same Saturday as the Breeders' Cup at Keeneland and the U.K. football game against Tennessee. According to the Herald-Leader, with all of that traffic, one council member is suggesting moving trick-or-treating to October 30th, that Friday night, for safety reasons. But Mayor Jim Gray's staff is saying that there is no alternative date to holding Halloween celebrations. It has come up several times wow. in the past through the years when there have been uh, conflicting uh, situations and it has yeah. fallen on a Sunday and they in Lexington generally have decided to keep it whatever day it comes on. So and That's a lot of know. action for one day. Yeah, so uh, we'll see what happens. Maybe more discussion on that. Uh, coming up on 509 and WKYT this morning is just getting started. For the first time in more than 20 years, a famous crooner is getting his own stamp. We'll tell you more in your consumer news. And we're looking outside. Of course, that camera go right out, right as I step on, right? It's a beautiful day. Promise you that. I'll show you your latest forecast off into your weekend. Coming up.